All right, here we go. This is round two of the ABT Championship Division. Got Michi playing the white checkers on top against Carlos Oscarate on, on bottom here. Presume Carlos, a Florida player here, and Michi you probably all recognize as the number two giant. Really top level player. Uh, in the final, I believe, tomorrow, or whenever they play it, of the Masters jackpot as well. Uh, so 6-3 standard. After double twos, we still make our standard 11 and four play. 5-2, looks like you can uh, at least get 18 to 13 to safety. And then is it worth leaving the checkers around in the outfield for building? Sure, our opponent hasn't split yet. So probably not too many indirects, six of them. Um, but he could consider 10 to eight as a cleanup there too. 4-3 with how much uh, development he's done in front, I think splitting is called for. So yeah, this play looks nice. Already has the 11 containing the back checker. 6-1 looks like it can make the five point, but it's gonna leave a direct six if we do that. Um, I think it tends to still be worth it in the early game to make such a strong asset. And when we're missed, we're very happy. Then we have sixes to attack back, so our opponent has a little work to do as well. 3-1, a bit of a dilemma for Michi. Of course, he'd like to anchor now, um, but making the five point in the rack is very strong as well. Um, doesn't always get attacked here. He's playing against 10 in the zone. The five point, I feel like, offensively goes up quite a bit in value once you've made the four already as well just to make that perfect three-point board, best three-point board available. So he's gonna choose that. Difficult decision there, though. I'm really not sure which one, which one is best. Of course, generally a better point, but when, when the choice is between anchoring or you know, being attacked directly with sixes like this. Oh, Carlos has an interesting uh, dilemma here, too. He can just make the four point, or, he, or four prime by making the bar, or he can hit loose to prevent his opponent from anchoring. Uh, given that he's now outboarded and has two checkers trapped back there, I lean pretty heavy towards making the bar point. Seems very strong, but it's gonna be frustrating to have those spares on the eight and the six frozen if Michi's able to roll a three and, uh, and anchor. The double hit, another really good option. Reduces the shots quite a bit. Um, allows him to capitalize on the, the blitzing game plan. I wasn't looking at that three as a nice option. Maybe that swings it to uh, the attacking play. It could be fine. And is missed and gets to cover the ace now. And now if Michi can enter even on the 23, he's doing great. That's a very strong shot from him. The six is a little tougher. Well, yeah, I suppose we don't really want to give that containing 11 point up, but uh, builds the nicest for the bar point. And it seems a little strange to leave the direct two and allow our opponent to potentially escape with tempo. So five is down for sure. And then does Carlos want to try to step up for, for escape? I think, hmm, that's a tough one. There's a lot of numbers that are going to hit off the edge of the prime there. But not having stepped up, Michi gets to do this and block sixes. So. Would have prevented a roll like that. Would have been hit loose with five to three probably instead. Two five gonna hit, very nice shot. But Michi's still a very strong board and an anchor, so I think he's got game left in this. A fan not so good and a block to pick up. I think the cube can be coming here. And difficult decision for Michi, but with the four and the three to fill in, feels like he must win a lot of games when he can enter quickly. But also when that checker gets picked up, he's gonna lose a lot of gammons with three and maybe four back. Um, not sure how this all shakes out, but my instinct is probably a pass for the gammons. But Michi's gonna take it. I imagine he knows this better than me. There is certainly a lot of work to do and two checkers semi-dead behind, um, behind the anchor. Yeah, I don't think the, there's much urgency in safetying that blot up when we can just make the four point and maybe have Michi dance half the time. Seems like a very strong candidate. But he's gonna safety the blot to make sure he gets to play his racing game plan first. <laughs> Double threes. Would have been hit, so he's glad that he uh, safetyed that blot up now on this particular roll. Breeze doesn't do a whole lot in this particular scenario. And 6-2 now. It looks like all we have is to clear the 11 point and then stack up eight to six. This is really stiff, but it's, it's hard to imagine volunteering direct shots against such strong structure 
on Michi's side, which is probably why Michi found the take here. Very threatening position for a long time with only three points made. And he was actually really early on the cube. That's interesting. Uh, 137 early with how much work he has left to do. I thought that was threatening enough to send it. I'm off on this position by quite a bit. I guess a big tip is that it's not such a, I don't know, you can still win even when your opponent puts you in a, in a perfect 23 point game. So given that he still has quite a bit of work to get there, uh, must be pretty playable from here. 5-3, eight away from the blot but can't hit. Uh, yeah, Carlos is 5-3, can hit though. I think it's worth pointing on head. I'm not sure I see a play B. And gammon threat continues. Michi has a couple of four and two enters with four four, four six, two six, all have the option of hitting. Uh, this probably makes the bar point to just get a little bit closer to home, reduce blocks. It does volunteer the 4-1-2 in addition to the 4-6-2-6. So quite a few shots it leaves from the bar. Um, I'm not sure I see a safer way to play it though. I'm gonna go through his options here, okay. Okay, so if he lifts like this and continues the ace, he reduces shots by a small amount. Uh, but gets hit anyway, despite his efforts, okay. It's just, uh, when Michi just enters after that play, then clearing the mid gets very difficult. So I think it's a nice time to do it while your opponent's on the bar. And after a fan, now has Michi turned this game around significantly enough. What is the race gonna be? If it's close, then I think Carlos still has chances to enter and scramble around, isn't too dead yet. And with three checkers still to get around, uh, seems reasonable to have to play this on. I don't think he's thinking too good. So this 6-1, I guess we're just trying to figure out how to spread out the best we can, but uh, Shouldn't be too big of a difference between plays here, I wouldn't expect. Uh, finding his best containment options. And yeah, definitely shy of a cube here. So links up some blocks. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Why do we want to be a hit from the bar? Still have a four point board to contend with. Carlos, a ton of life here. Uh, eights and fours and twelves all hit. Uh, nine gonna miss though. What can we do with this? We're gonna have to leave a direct shot somewhere. So how do we want to do that? We can duplicate twos by breaking the 17. But that 17 point is a nice point of contact right now, so I'm not sure what that wants. This comes out to a double shot, so it seems... I don't love that candidate. Can't keep moving. Um, it feels like it reduces uh, checkers that might be picked up most by just clearing the 13 here. But it does take some pressure off of the, the blot on the 16 points. No, it still leaves a direct one with it. So I think, I think that's my preferred play in this position. Tough to say though. Let's see what Michi finds here. It seems like it must reduce shots. Like all, all things point to this, yeah. Bot prefers this too, but actually 21 to 15 and four to one is a strong candidate here too. That surprises me. I would have trouble with that one. Uh, breaking the 17 looks like it duplicates twos, but it also creates a five, so too many shots there. And I think he's gonna find this just for reduction. But it is giving up some pressure on that blot and uh, a landing point for the blot on the 21, all these things. So maybe, maybe he feels like he might need that piece of structure. I'm not sure. I'm surprised how close these plays are. I guess, strangely enough, just coming out with the one blot loses the least gammons. And that seems it doesn't win as much as the 13-10, 13-7. I, I suppose I'm seeing the issue with uh, not coming out 
is that twos and ones get to hit in the board as well. So a little bit of duplication, but also eights, twelves get there. There must be just a few too many numbers that are going to get hit loose um, in, a, in a way that's going to, to benefit Carlos here. This is a tricky one for me, though. Here we are again, um, deciding between two plays that are 0 .004 different, so four millipoints. And it feels like this is where we need to spend the most clock time, when the plays are actually equivalent and no, no mistake can be made. But it ends up choosing this play. This is uh, best by a very small amount. Ace three going to hit in the outfield and just continue, I think. I guess he can stay out of six range and play six to three, but I think getting closer to home is a little bit worth with a little bit more. I like his play. All right, no need to expose any blots on Michi's end, so he's going to wait a roll and see what Carlos can do. 4-4 four, four is going to freeze the blot. It's going to bring two checkers home to safety. But Michi's going to get one more shot at this. I think it's probably better to clear the point and try to play for the race here. That would be my instinct. I'm not sure that we really need the deuce point. Um, yeah, this is going to reduce gammons if we're hit. All kinds of nice things. Plus, it might be difficult to clear later. Um, it might increase shots somehow, but um, I think probably worth it there. So 17 to 13 is hitting for sure. And then any deuce you like, I guess we increase covers. I don't know. 4 to 2 doesn't tend to be the right idea. It gives us an ace to cover immediately, but then when we cover with the 3, then we have a dead checker. So kind of better to stay back. So I'd be looking for my best containment deuce, which is probably 17 to 15. When we hop out with 3-6, we get a double shot now. Double two is going to fan. And does Michi have enough yet? He's going to roll on with not enough racing lead and still two up in points. If he's threatening to close out, then it should be an easy cue, but uh, not happening quite yet. So once again, how, how big is the racing deficit here? That's going to be the, the main question. And it looks like he's still down 27 pips. Just throwing this onto the computer real quick, which that makes for an interesting decision. I don't know. It should make it takeable for Carlos just hoping to hop in and, and run around. But it's, it's quite the tall order to enter on the three not be hit, get to hop out to the outfield, not be contained. So I, I think Michi must be a sizable favorite here, but decides that he's not at risk of losing his market quite yet and did have a 23 cube there. Um, but going to wait a roll. This, how much does this improve? It gives him double fives to close, which is a market loser. So maybe he's going to use that as his incentive to uh, send the cube now. That could be. He could also use a... Six four or fours to make the nine point, which uh, blocks a lot of escaping numbers and contains well. But yeah, Michi knows he must be like really close to something here, and deciding the exact moment is just very difficult in these positions. He's actually already lost his market with this play somehow. Just the double fives is enough to swing this to a pass for Carlos. That's that's surprising stuff for me. Shows how difficult these are to evaluate. I just, I, I don't really have good formulas or rules of thumb for this. I mean, I know, of course, if I can close my opponent out, they're dead, so I gotta send it sometime before that. And Michi gonna roll on here, okay. So this is gonna be a sizable missed cube. Yeah, something like 21 all the way to, either of these should be fine. But we're just looking for a lot of double shots when, when Carlos is able to enter and hop out. And now we're only 10 pips behind. And so I think Michi's going to know he has a very strong cube here, and I think he should expect that his opponent has a pass. Um, big feature here that he actually is wasting two pips on the ace points as really impure structure. So even when Carlos hits a shot, Michi has a lot of opportunities to just enter high and run around the same way that Carlos has kind of been threatening to do from the 22 point even. It's a fairly difficult position for, for Carlos to find a take here. 
you may find it to be a big hint uh, toward the past that uh, Michi's been thinking about this a lot for a couple rolls in a row. Um, the temptation here to take this is that you almost never lose a gammon. You've got all your checkers inside. You're not going to get primed and have checkers shaking loose, anything like this. Um, so it looks like at least we're just playing, if we, if we have that 21% wins, that's plenty. So we don't have to win so much with the recube value. Those I tend to enjoy airing on the side of taking as well. We're actually kind of close to too good. Carlos finds the correct pass. And that's a two-point lead for Michi. <laughs> How many people we got watching here? Just 15 for now, huh? Okay, okay. Hope that picks up as we get deeper in the tournament. 5-1 is going to split. We have to be at pretty dramatic scores to start slotting instead. I mean, it's, it's always fine, but no need to adjust quite yet in this long of a match. 3-4 is a pretty natural split too, I guess. But we don't like leaving the fly shots when our opponent has that ace split. It actually creates quite a few numbers that hit. Carlos finds one. Three is going to enter, and it feels like a six should come out just to get moving, but it's going to come into a double shot. So maybe it's a little bit better to just play 13 to seven and try to start some offense while our opponent's trying to escape. Um, oh, tempo hits an idea too, but I, w I wouldn't have thought so this deep. I guess I don't see such a strong call for a tempo, but I trust Michi in general too. Five three, I think, can just come around the bend, leave a bunch of fly shots while Michi has a blot and board. 5-2 is going to hit. And double fours. Can't really do much with either of the back checkers. We already have a checker off the mid, so making the nine looks a little strippy. So yeah, making a board point seems very strong. Um, what can we do with the last one? Uh, this creates good sixes, so not my instinct, but we also come out into a double shot if we play 20 to 16. Maybe that's what I find, though. Six hits, and then what's the ace going to do? We can just unstack six to five. We're outboarded, but what else do we have? We have to develop naturally somehow, and Michi with a pretty ugly position here, kind of laughing about leaving all these blots around with the worst board. Gets hit twice for it. And there might be quite a few cubes in the next sequence, depending on how Michi enters here. Two blots around. It's a five-blot play that he, that he played there, too, which is, always tends to be very risky. Makes the ace point, which can keep him around for a while. But I, I still feel like sending a cube with two more blots to pick up is, should be strong here. 6-3 um, can spend the whole roll to hit on the 11. Otherwise, under stacking 6-3 looks very nice as well. And how do we enter now? Now we have two anchors, so Michi can have a lot more life in this. He can start playing really pure, and you know, slot six to five, things like this are gonna work out just fine. Also not under a ton of priming threat necessarily with that stack of checkers on the six point still for Carlos. Um, so this double anchor game can work very well for Michi. I think he really equalized the position quite a bit by making both those anchors. Five three is gonna take the checker off the 20 for sure. We can't just let our opponent build even when we're worried about timing and things like this. Five down, 13 to eight looks nice. Oh, I just saw Eric Peterson, I gotta give him some coffee. Five, six gonna hit from the roof, okay. I don't see any better sixes, but Michi's not really like ready to hit or anything like this. He just needs to find pure plays to make structure. Five, two can be a, I guess there's no need for the anchor. So what can we do that would be better? I don't think six to four feels a little too impure for my taste. Um, I'm looking to just try to get checkers around right now. So maybe I could even enter deep or come out to the bar, whatever it might be. 5-3 going to consolidate blots on the 11 and start to make structure. Good roll for Michi. 6-3 is going to, I mean, 21 to 15 feels mandatory. I don't see any other option for the 6. And then I feel like just slotting in a position like this with such a checkers back advantage is fine. Even when we're hit, we're still ahead in the race. We have a better board. So our opponent's not really excited to do that. I think he will go for it, but it's still kind of scary to hit from this kind of position. 
five down looks nice as well. Double twos. Well, now that he's got that Dilly Builder on the floor, it is quite tempting to make the deuce with this whole roll. But he's just going to roll his position forward. This must be strong as well. Try to capitalize on a leading race. 6-1 can make the five point, I think. It's really hard to pass up a piece of structure like that. I'm not sure I really see a play B. It's basically slotting or something. Oh yeah, he can just run. I see, he looked at 20 to 13. Doesn't feel productive enough. He still has the anchor, still down in the race, I think, so it feels worth it. The four can hit, how much does it gain now? It gets us a spare all the way to the eight. And we don't really need the anchor when our opponent has only seven in the zone, so I like this play. I think it's a good time to just try to work forward instead of sitting back on an anchor. Uh, Ace three gonna, Okay, he decides he doesn't have the time to remake the, the 24. Probably right. That jumps out if you have like the running pip count or something available, but not always intuitive. Sometimes our instinct is to just play the back game. Um, fighting for the five point seems good for, for Carlos here. I like this play. Double aces, what can this do? This can improve to the 23 with those two and maybe just lift uh, seven to six or switch eight to seven. All these seem value, valid, but it keeps all of our offensive structure in place. I like that. Um, if he's still sure that he's so close in the race, then maximum mobility would probably be to step up to the 22. But, but just having a second anchor gives a lot of options. It seems like a strong play to me. Yeah, and his decision is, I guess, my does his opponent have good sixes elsewhere? What's going to give him the most trouble? leaving fives open or leaving sixes open. And so sixes are gonna force things to play down 13 to seven, which might overrun the position a little easier. So I think I like this, 13 to eight looks a little safer. So the one's covering for sure, and I think it's time to find some mobility 23 to 18. Good find from Carlos. And this is shaping up to be a back game. Carlos has a liability of that, that checker on the four that he put there forever ago now, kind of stuck there and not doing anything. Michi's position, I don't know what the timing is, but it's looking pretty good. Hey there, Gary. Um, he can hit with the ace maybe to reduce mobility. How does this help? It really, again, depends quite a bit on the race and uh, how well timed this game is. If it's, if it's looking like the timing's okay, then he can just kind of play quiet, try to make points, wait for this... Uh, where it, wait for this position to take its natural course. If he needs to fix the timing somehow, then hitting is kind of going to help that. 4-1 is just going to make the bar point. Okay, nice step towards home for, for Carlos. Sure, Michi just finding simple plays to try to build his board and keep his timing. Going to need a 4 or 6 in the future to get that extra checker back moving to make sure he actually has the timing to hold this position. I think he played 13-8 already, I guess. Yeah, 18-13 to 13 seems like a fine option too. Yeah, I like this. Let's just break contact now before it's really threatening while we still have a prime. Make sure we uh, don't get into a worse spot. Okay, double five. So Michi clearly has timing issues the way he's viewing this position if he's going to come out to the 18. I think holding both of those looks nice. Keep pressure on this blot and makes a point. So we don't like putting the third checker on the three, but we give up a lot of contact when we play down this way and, and put less pressure on the 18 point blot. Decides to stay with the purity. 6-2 can't quite get the safety. He's going to have to park in front of that bar point anchor. Oh, unless he plays behind like this. Okay, that's an option. Uh, I'm not sure it's so scary to leave a shot and make Michi give up his uh, bar point. Fives is going to remake the mid and make the eight now, or the three. I, I don't see many other options, yeah. And Michi coming out of this with potentially a fairly strong 22-point game. Um, maybe better than lifting the blot is making the five prime. Should look at this. With three checkers stuck behind it, he's going to, especially when Miss, going to have some really strong cubes coming here. Five one doesn't do much. Going to slot the deuce. 
and I think Michi's going to be figuring out if he wants to take this this cube or not. Often, just a 22 point behind a five prime is enough to pass. Such low chances of escaping to a race. With third back at two, I think the. Two open, very nice shot for Carlos to start. Two three gonna split and try to make an anchor against this structure, pressure the eight point. Four one, probably the best we can do now that our opponent's looking at the outfield is just get a new spare on the eight. Always feels like such a waste of a roll to just play a five down like this, but uh, I think it's best we've got. Why not make an anchor? We could make an outfield point too, but our opponent has a little better board, threatening to attack some, gonna reduce his options. 3-1 makes a nice structure, and Carlos off to a nice start here. But Michi has the anchor and can play this game for quite a while with uh, decent chances in the race. Having rolled the double fives, there's a good chance he's gonna have to leave that 22 point sooner than later before things get too dangerous. 4-3 for Carlos. So we have competing ideas here. Our opponent split and made an anchor, but our opponents rolled double fives. Well, splitting and making, a, making an anchor makes us want to split. Um, our opponent having double fives in a blitzing formation makes it so we actually want to kind of camp back on the safe point and not open up the attacking game plan. I think I favor his play there, but it's uh, pretty unclear here. And it seems like it's limited Michi's options quite a bit. Uh, probably would have been happy to lose, hit loose even with a weaker board there. I think Carlos can keep sitting on this and just play six to five now, but the ace is probably the safest split available. So does Michi really want to, is he so excited to attack back six to four? Gonna put a lot of indirect pressure on those two blocks in the outfield too. So maybe I do favor the 24 to 23 there. It feels like a nice opportunity and we are running out of time on the front. So look at all the, I think we would have gotten like a two five, two six, five three out of it by advancing. 6-4, just running seems pretty nice. Uh, we're back in the nicest place for our back checker, so if we knew that roll was coming, I guess we're happy to stay. Uh, but he opens up the double fives, which Michi finds immediately. Gonna play safe here and still has some work to do to escape uh, Carlos' structure, even when Carlos fans. Carlos does not fan, I'm not even sure that's better for him, really. But Michi likely to attack with a lot of sixes, threes, ones here, then figure out the rest. This is gonna make a point nicely. It does kill a checker on the three. And then I think least shots is, is to just stay on the double fours. But he's going to leave the four five instead. Oh, it's uh, a little bit of diversification. Uh, four five gets hit. But fours and sixes are coming out, so Michi wanted to save fives to attack. I think that's the idea that he had there. Um, but he's come out of this position reasonably nicely. This is not great. It's going to start to crack. And now he's in another 22 point game with a third checker back and problems with his board, which is gonna make it quite difficult to take. But he might be doing better in the race in this one, which could make it quite a bit more tempting. We'll see what it, I think, we'll see if Carlos even thinks he has enough race to send this cube. My instinct would be that it's probably a double, almost regardless of the race. Michi just gonna let it go, okay. And yeah, when we look at it, uh, Carlos is actually down 17 pips in this position. Michi instantly passes it for fear of uh, rolling a six that would crack him, and he's correct, it's almost too good. Cracks, crash boards are just a huge problem, can't survive that. And we're in an even match. 6-3 for Carlos, tends to split, we'll see what he finds, yep. Favors that play. Taking a quick phone call, okay. <laughs> Three, two can't hit anything, so we're gonna find some duplication idea with our split. Oh, he's actually gonna go for uh, the slot in front of it, which I think uh, tends to be quite close. Ace is gonna point on head. It could hit him back, but uh, chooses to just make the point while putting a checker on the roof. That seems like, like it makes a lot of sense. 
three six gets to hit on the bar this time. And a lot of brought, blots around from Ichi again here. Finding himself in many quite loose positions. Carlos going to hit from the bar, or yeah, on the bar, from the bar. 5-1, what does this do? It's going to hit on the bar again, I do believe. And he's going to end up in another five-blot play while outboarded. But what else can he do? John Turner. John Turner. All right, with five blots around, he's happy to hit again loose on the five. <laughs> All right, gets the block count down to four. Small improvement from Ichi, would have liked to hit. Oh, two five is a uh, very strong roll. Makes the rack, hits uh, I wonder if he had enough market losers to think about sending with three black back already. This feels probably too good, so it feels like we must have had market losers last roll. I think we probably cruised past one there. Would have been a nice spot to stop and think a little bit. I'm going to send the cube, and I, I can't imagine Michi taking this one. And yeah, another quick pass from him. Two five was a particularly strong roll, but I think he had a couple like that, and maybe enough pressure either way. No, he was right. Forty eight, no double. And the five two was just a massive market loss. Five two followed by a fan, pretty big swing. All right, plays the five two down to open. Interesting. He had a leading score. Uh, split tends to be slight favorite. Yeah, he was on the cusp of too good after that roll, by the way. Um, only by five millip points. Uh, no split from Michi. You're going to respond to down plays with 4-1 uh, down of his own. Makes a lot of sense. And so the fives are very stiff for Carlos. In some trouble here. Uh, Michi preferring very much to uh, cover the five point. But six is not so bad. Going to gain a lot of pips. And he's going to be in very strong position if he can be missed here. Um, but not having as much racing lead is typical. So I think Carlos is right to split and also try to have an anchor of his own. Uh, given the double fives that he rolled early, yeah. this still must be a relatively close race. Yeah, yeah. And outboarded, I don't think Michi's going to have a cube quite yet, even when he has a big racing lead. Usually yeah. you want like one more board point than your opponent, or at least one board point made. I think best we can do with this is down 13 to 7 and cover the 5, yeah. Even when the ace is hit, we get returns from the bar point. 5-2 is a bit of a whiff. What is this going to do? We can get out of range of being attacked in the board. I like that idea. Maybe, I mean, we duplicate both fours and twos that would maybe make the five prime points. Maybe we want to get closer to home and just advance. This seems fine. Could also think about stepping up with the deuce, create some more attacking numbers on board, but links the blots. And now Michi feels like he has enough of an advantage. But still having to bring the bar point home in a close race feels like it'd be a take. Uh, but but uh, Carlos is going to let this one go. That's an interesting one to me, too. I mean, his, his position was pretty ugly with those early double fives, so maybe he's on to something there. I'm not sure. Uh, only two pips ahead Michi was, so it feels like there's enough race to play there. Uh, gets a 4-2 to start again. No, 88 pass. Wow. Nice find. That would have been tricky for me. 3-1 follow-up from Michi, 6-5 going to run. Five two, yeah, we can fix our distribution 13 to 8 and split with the deuce. Looks very nice. Double fours, can't point on head anywhere, but we can just make the unstack, the midpoint, making the five point, very strong roll for Carlos, and has the rack again. Developing quickly and nicely in a lot of these games. But a few threats for Carlos, I'm sure, here. 4 3. Well, our only safe play seems to be stacking up the six point. And we have a small board advantage, but we have a checker back advantage, too. I've already escaped one, so maybe just playing safe is fine. Uh, play B, I think, is down and hit loose on the 22 or on the 3. And now Michi's able to anchor instead, okay, and he's going to just hope for a 3 or a 6 to make a bid for freedom. 4-1 is not too bad. Oh, he's going to smooth out his 6. I would have probably just thought about 13-8 to eight and get a checker closer to home. Ultimately, that's going to be our goal. I don't really 
really want checkers behind the anchor, but it uh, looks nice for distribution too, so can't be too bad. Maybe it's even right, I don't know. 6.5 I think is going to run all the way. And Carlos in another winning race against the 22 point game. This one looks a little more playable for Michi though. A lot of work to clear the midpoint. How far ahead is, is the race now? Center this into there. It's going to be a big feature of that whether Carlos has a cube now. This is the most normal 22 point anchor game. Of course, it feels like there's enough contact for, for Michi to play this, like I said, but the race is going to probably be a determiner in whether or not Carlos has a cube. And 13 pips, I would think that's enough. Double threes is going to probably, oh, well, it can just clear down to the 10 with a 25 pip lead and probably cash that way. Um, so maybe that's actually better than, than making the bar point. Yeah, Carlos does pass by a 26 cube small one. Five prime can't be bad either, prevents double fours. Maybe this is better. And I don't think Michi's going to be able to play this out against the five prime once again. Um, so clear the aid, play this, I'm not sure what's actually best here. I think uh, hard to hang on to the contact, stay in pier is always a good option. And we'll see if he sends it. I think we've lost our market. <laughs> Means you're going to spend some time thinking about this one though, okay. Gonna let it go, gonna let it go. Seems prudent. Oh, I need to get some coffee to Eric Peterson. I keep seeing him walk by, but he's not making eye contact with me. Might hop off stream to do that. Video is buffering for you all over there. Okay, that's good to know. Can ask about it, see if we can do anything about that. I haven't noticed on my end, it looks good here. Though occasionally we've been having issues like that through the weekend as we figure out all the streaming technicalities, you know. Subject to a lot of goofy things like the hotel's connection and all the gear that we're bringing and using. It's a lot of ways for streaming to go wrong. 5-2 just links up on the 11, escapes naturally. 7 away, 8 away, 2-1. You really like the 13 to 11 to contain, and how about 24 to 23 to pressure the outfield? I like this quite a bit. Also splits for an anchor. 6-5 escapes. Okay, full freedom for Carlos. Going to need to make some, some sort of board improvement to have a cube here, um, but, but definitely in the lead. Maybe not so far ahead in the racing lead. I'm not sure. Could be pretty close. 3-2, is it worth volunteering the fly shots? Probably not against the better board, so sure, we can just play 13-8. 3-2 either anchors or creates a better board point. And Michi's going to go with the anchoring play uh, and capitalizing on his contact and board strength, making sure that he keeps the contact zone as wide as possible with that play. The other option, if he makes the 21, then he makes sure he's never blitzed, takes uh, priming and attacking game plans away completely. Um, He's happy he makes the anchor if Carlos rolls something like double aces or, or threes, something that develops really, really quickly here. So always a tricky thing to balance in these kinds of positions. My instinct is usually to just anchor. Um, I don't think the board advantage is enough here, and I imagine the race is reasonably close. Um, but, but these are tough decisions for me, for sure. Get them wrong plenty. I mean, it gets really clear when we have a five-point board or something like this. Um, what our goal is, but he's down nine after the roll. So yeah, it feels like quite a dilemma there to pick, look that up real quick. Six, four gets the point on head now. It could make the bar point as well. Maybe that's actually better, I'm not sure. But unstacking can't be bad. Five is gonna enter high and fight for an anchor, ends up with a five prime now, okay. So Michi's structure looking very nice, but down in the race and two checkers back to zero back. 6-5 is awkward. I think we're going to... Oh, he can just play safe like this. Okay. Yeah, too much to uh, risk getting loose. Um, yeah, okay. So anchoring really not even showing up on that one play, by the way. I'm looking through it. Yeah, it would have been a blunder. we got to find some sort of contact and build. 2-1 for Michi. So he's got kind of this... Well, no, not the similar problem. Does he want to advance 24 to 22? and make sure that aces aren't able to point. 
he's just going to start the best point and keep the maximum contact instead. Seems reasonable. There's Eric behind the players there. Need to get that man some coffee. Three four doesn't solve anything quite yet. Double hit always tempting. When it works out, it feels like it could solve a lot of things. Our opponent can fan or enter high. We can close the ace, reduce the contact zone. Um, but of course, against such a strong board, the default play should just be 13 to 6. Play quietly and try to capitalize on a leading race. What do we have here? 6 4. Probably going to. I don't think he's under pressure to anchor yet. I think the contact's better. So I'm still just playing on the front and rolling home, I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't think he needs to give up the midpoint. I don't think it's such a problem to uh, be, be breaking the 8 and the 7 to make a board point. Yeah, this looks very nice to me. Oh, interesting. Just look this play up, and the preference by a small mount is actually 13 to 3. Just play it from the back and leave the single ace. It didn't, I mean, I guess our opponent has a bunch of good aces all around the board. Maybe the duplication is pretty strong. Maybe the midpoint's about to go soon, but usually this is the kind of play where you find when the alternatives are a bit too destructive, and it really looks okay to, to just slide four like this and just keep the midpoint instead. So uh, yeah, Michi finds the play that I would find too. 6-4. I think we're out of options and we're going to double hit now. Hope to get away with this with the race. And Ace is going to turn the game around completely a third of the time. And he does it. Even a deuce um, buys him some life, but maybe not much. Maybe just a roll of it. And a fan, I think, is going to end this game optionally or play on too good. Yeah. He's just going to immediately take that roll. Six is going to cover. Oh, he could hit. I think the six covers, though, and the four up. Yeah, so the four up actually seems like the certain part. Pressuring that blot. Ace three cleans up the blot. Very nice roll for Carlos. Still under too much pressure to get out of this game with the claim. Michi threatening to close the bar point. Oh, he's going to, OK. So he might not close the bar, and his opponent can escape with a six. And so he decides it's best to send this over and claim the point now. Still feels too good to me, really. I'm not sure. Yeah, 118 too good that position was still. Yeah. But uh, even match now, seven point match, they're going to play from here. Three one going to make a point. Another very nice pointing start for Carlos. Five three going to make a more impure point for for Michi to fight back with. Double two is blocked a little bit from the anchor side, but that's fine. He's still got the four and the eleven to make. And here he is with the rack again. Very nice. Michi gets to make the four point. Nice improvement. Going to leave a couple fly shots though. Some sevens hit. Double six is even better. I think for sure it's got to come out 24 to 18 and make the five prime. And this game is probably generally over after this roll. I'm not sure if an ace saves or not. Uh, Michi's going to hit it and test that out, come in 13 to 6. But here are a whole bunch of threats, 5-3, 5-1, 2-6, 2-1, And even when we don't hit that, we're still stuck behind a five prime with a bunch of ammunition. So yeah, Michi just quickly going to let this go. And six away, seven away. Okay, it looks like the players are going to take a short break here. Um.
um, Michi taking a picture of the clock in case anything happens with it. So I'm going to take a quick break here and try to distribute some coffee as well, but we'll be back in just a moment with the conclusion of Michi versus Carlos. Good match so far.
All right, both players back at the board. Looks like we're going to get started back up here. Never sure if my audio is live again. Oh, we must have like a delay going actually too. That's cool. I keep trying to do that, but uh, okay. What did I miss? Four one, four one up. And enters with a five four. Is it better to make the point or hit or make the anchor? He chooses the anchor variety. Okay, interesting. Don't have the usual du duplication of leaving the blot on the nine, um, but with more checkers back, maybe it's better to have the long term asset. 13 to 9 with 2 looks pretty strong here. And then I guess our only last one is play one more down. One five. So the 24 and the 20 together are not the double anchor game that we usually want. So I think it's going to be quite tempting to try to enter high here. Um, but it also feels pretty strange to play 20 in slot without the second anchor already. Um, but he's going to go for that. Distribution of 13 to 8 would have been nice, too. I'm not sure. Might have just made both anchors and chosen which one I wanted to keep later or split down the road. A lot of options. 5-2 can make a point, so yeah, why not? He can also run. I don't feel the pressure to escape here, though, so I, I'd kind of like to put pressure on that back blot. 2-1 uh, going to start to build here. And can get a checker moving, too. I like this. Okay making a bid. Uh, the thing is, he doesn't really want to make the 18. So it's an interesting place to put it. Uh, gets pointed on for his effort. And now four checkers behind the prime, really hoping to make a second anchor, I do believe. 4-4, four, four, not going to do that. It's pretty well blocked, too. Interesting. Uh, after we make the 4, is it better to step up to the edge for mobility? No, he wants to stay back and try to make the 21 as well. Seems reasonable. Has plenty of checkers to play from the 13 points. 5-2, now it's going to make the four point. And Michi in pretty tough shape in this game already, even though he has the rack on his side. Ace, I think he's going to, well, he can't keep the two anchors because he'd have to destroy his board to do it, so it just comes up. And it feels like a good time to get a cube in for Carlos, I think, but uh, going to roll on instead. Not going to, yeah, so blitzing and taking the checker off the ace has a lot of merit here. I don't see a safe play with the last five otherwise anyway. Um, and we're going to win a few more gammons when we put our opponent in the air, so why not? Double twos? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think in my mind I'm just saying I'm ready to pass this and I don't care too much what I'm playing around here. But yeah, huge racing lead, extra checkers back, a lot of gammons in this position. I think this is Carlos's to kill aim if he would like to. He's going to send the cube here. And I expect Michi to find a pass, but... Uh, no, I think this is... I think he could have doubled last roll, and maybe Michi even would have passed here. Question the audience if it's an early double or not. This looks pretty strong to me. I think Michi will let it go. I'm actually surprised he's thinking about it as long as he is. Um, so, but I don't know. I could just be the one miscalibrated here. It looks like there could be problem rolls coming up right away, and he does have a strong board. Um, so with all these, with seven points, he's so likely to have to break something. Maybe this is what Michi is going through the numbers for. And if he gets a shot, he can do well. But such good priming structure as well in front of this, these four checkers that it's very hard for Michi to find mobility in this position. And down 58 pips I see now that I entered it. Um, it just there must, uh, it's 105 to 163, so quite a few down. So it feels like the gammon threat is quite real here. It's the biggest problem. And so it's actually closer to too good than a take. 403 pass here. Yeah, 25% gammons. We don't always assume that the gammons can be that high when we have a high anchor like this. Um, but the, the two extra checkers back is a huge problem. I expect Michi to find this one out, but it's possible that if he finds enough, uh, okay, he's going to take this. And this is a pretty sizable mistake here. Yeah. Six five, so must have found enough numbers like this where he feels like, well, I might get to hit a shot. And I have a good board on the other side, but hitting the shot still leaves a lot of work to do. And when we fan, we're losing a lot of gammons. Three two, I think, is going to cover from the bar. Oh, he's going to cover from the rear and keep the prime instead. Okay. I think having the board point and creating some more fans and getting closer to home all make a lot more sense to me. 
Two's going to hit, and now Michi has some chances, but still a lot of work to do in this game. The re cubes are a bit stronger with the match difference as well, so that's a nice reason to take the cube. But uh, Carlos performs well from the bar and sends a fifth checker back now. And Michi fans, making the 23 point would be a huge improvement in this position. Very playable game if he can do that before Carlos can take him off it. So much so that it might be worth hitting loose 8 to 2 there. But just going to play around. And Michi gets his wish, in with the 2 and gets the hit as well. So a little bit of both. Can potentially play forward here, and even when Carlos enters and hits, he's going to have the back game option. Uh, the forward option is a lot longer road here. But makes a big step in that direction. Maybe just slot, because like, what can go wrong here? We either get timed, um, we always make the checker more pure and try to make a point, but I guess he wants to keep all the structure he's got. Yeah, OK. Five going to hit and continue trying to play the forward game. Why not slot the back, I guess, as well? I guess five is going to come out. We don't have that many numbers we like from here, so it's a little confusing. Two six hits again, wow. Carlos performing, for sure. Um, but again, he's going to have a lot of winning chances, Michi is, from now having established these two anchors. But already running out of timing a little bit um, for this 2-5 game and likely to have to leave something if he can't very quickly roll a 3 and then hop out with a 5 or a 6. Um, it's not super clear to me it improves his timing to be hit on the midpoint, but we don't really want to give up a point either. I don't know. I'm, I'm torn between 13-9 and 7-3. They both seem like they must be okay. 2-1 can't get past, so staying further back created a little extra contact. That had a positive effect that way. Um, he can duplicate the hits and covering fours by stepping 17 to 16. That might be worth it. But either way, I think I like 8 to 6 and figure out the other piece. Um, he wants to stay outside instead, though. I think bringing the checker in, inside seems worth a little more, but I'm not sure. The one can cover, and then... Do we want to be hit, feel like it makes timing, or just come down and try to build? I think coming down to build seems fine. I don't really see a better five. Seven to deuce is getting a little bit deep. I guess the issue with seven to two as well is that when we're hit, we might already have cracking rolls if we can't escape. Fours can be really bad, for example. Um, so I think I favor 13 to eight by, by a decent amount here. Yeah, more yes to buffering. Okay, I'll talk to Andy, our streaming person, after this and see if we can figure that out. It might be that we've got it on delay this time. I don't think we'd be running a bunch more on here. I'm not sure. It looks like it's on delay when I look at YouTube. Maybe we can improve that. 4-1. So, sure, something like this. I think whatever is fine. I was, I was going in my head over whether or not we need to slot and try to make that three-point urgently, but I don't think it's such a rush, and getting hit with an ace can be pretty bad. Six is not a good roll for Michi. Now he's going to be struck with a 23-point game. Can still win from here, for sure. Um, does he want to challenge the bot? In case, in case Carlos gets a nice roll that would make the five or the three, I think it's worth staying on the 14 for one roll and just playing eight to do seven to one. Um, what other those? Well, I guess those aren't forced. He could stay all the way back and just make the two. That's an interesting idea, but I think we really hate that and are completely out of time and risking cracking when our opponent points on us there. So, yeah, I think this middle of the road play is my favorite. Double fours. This is going to make the five point and clean up to the four point. Sure. I guess it could continue to the three as well. If Michi hadn't kept this contact, that might have been a nice option. All right, the five for sure, and then going to make the board with the ace. Yeah, it doesn't want to be attacked. Stepping to the 22 would just make it so that fours can naturally make the point without leaving shots as well. Six, five, what can this do? 
just rolling forward naturally and hoping that he can get one of those checkers on the 23 point moving before he has to crack and board. Six is forced, and so why not reduce shots with the four and slot the point? Sure. And Michi's got his chance with aces now. And five, six out is a, a nice no hit though. We'll see if Carl can cover here. He cannot. Maybe one of his worst no covers too. Uh, either we have to bury or leave another shot. I think five days is going to work. Uh, Mate is here to tell us what Michi should do. What do you think he should do with this 5-1? He, he votes hit. I think I agree here pretty wholeheartedly. Um, Michi wants to come out 23, or Mate wants to come out 23 to 18 as well. I think I like this. Yeah, the 2-5 from the bar looks a lot scarier than the 2-1 that already hits elsewhere. 2-3, I think this has to try. Yeah, this has to hit. Mate's here to say hit. And Michi has an interesting cube decision now, a recube at a trailing score. Carlos's take point going to be a little higher. The threes that hit are going to be devastating. What else do we have? 2-1, two, 2-2. Two, two. Two, four doesn't do too much. Two, five links up. Two, six hits. Yeah, I mean, a fan is not great, but there's still life after that, too. And it's going to be really hard for Carlos to find a recube. So this is quite tempting. It's going to take some thought. It's hard to see who's the favorite for sure in this game. Um, but even if they're even with a lot of gammon risk, it's going to probably favor Michi to send a recube anyway. So he's, he's getting rewarded for his bold take earlier in this game for sure. Or he can end up getting Gammon for the match, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe he won't be rewarded, we'll see. What an interesting spot they've gone in. I'm going to have to run this. What would I do before I run it? I really, if it was Speed Gammon, maybe I'd just ship it, but I'd be very uncertain. If I spent a lot of time, I'd probably end up thinking I'm not certain enough and I'll just wait a roll. Maybe lose my market and play on too good, I don't know. I, I feel very confused about this spot. I wouldn't fault either way. If Michi doubles, I'm taking this for sure. I think uh, he must win close to half the games here. Um, but yeah, it is, okay, I just ran it. It's a 142 cube. Uh, Michi is a 57% favorite in this game, wins 19% gammons. Carlos actually wins more gammons in this. Um, but again, the score dynamics of this, where this is probably a money beaver, uh, the recube is valuable to send here at a trailing score, and he's gonna find it. Good send here from Michi. We'll see what Carlos laughs before thinking about making his decision. Definitely in the blender here. It's not, I mean, it is a huge take, but it's not a fun one. You definitely see the path to losing a gammon for the match here. So it's uncomfortable. But he would be giving up quite a bit of equity to let this one go. We'll see what he comes up with. Yeah, I think, I mean, the really big hint here is that half the time, nearly half the time, our opponent fans. We must be doing pretty well when that happens with lots, you know, skewed around the board. If we look at dice distribution, that might be the entirety of it, too, yeah. Yeah, we're just, we're crushing on any fanning roll. You know, 5-2 is the weakest entry roll. It just makes an anchor. Still leaves a lot of shots around uh, for Michi, but most of his entries, 5-2 and 2-4 are a little bit of problems, and of course he's like approaching too good on all of his other hitting entries. Man, what an intense moment they found in this match though. All stems from Michi finding a 400 error take. And he gets here, where he has a uh, a sizable redouble and a very large take for, for Carlos, but one that's not easy to make. We'll see if we can find it. Michi also has more blots around the board, which is, I think, where the additional gammon threat comes from. Somehow that results in Carlos having less wins, but still more gammons than his opponent. There is certainly a world where where Michi enters and hits, and Carlos just anchors on the deuce and doesn't lose very many games at all. And he's going to let it go. Wow, OK, OK. Good find from Michi. Uh, that was a 600 there take. Yeah, yeah, a big one. 
But I mean, that can happen. The magnitude isn't as, as clear over the board, you know? Just very much fears potentially losing the match on that one. And instead is only going to have a one point deficit in the match. So feels good about his position afterward instead. So we're going to continue on from six away, five away. He's going to take a picture to look later. Yeah. I should have been saving these for them, I guess. <laughs> but I imagine someone will transcribe this for him as well. Some of these I go through and transcribe while I go, but I, I don't know. I feel like I can focus on talking about it a little easier when I don't do that and just run a few positions in breaks here and there. I think they were asking each other about it. I wonder if, if he asked Michi's opinion and he told him he thought it was a big take there. I don't know. But sometimes we get tricked there too, thinking maybe our opponent's actually thinking about whether or not it's too good. Double hit is a natural second roll play with the 6 5 here. Double six is fans. Wow. And with a match lead, this is a little harder to send the cube. Only a small effect, but it might be a tiny one for money. But even that, I'm not sure. I think uh, quite a bit of work to do. Going to bring the 10th checker in the zone. Oh, he just played two sixes there. Yeah. So I think covering is better than hitting in the outfield, but he's not even looking at that third checker. Yeah, four down for 10 in the zone, and now he has a real blitz threat. A fan would be devastating here. Double two solves everything. We can just stay back on that 23. Now Michi doesn't have much of an advantage at all other than the race, really needs to get his back checkers moving. But 5-2 uh, making the four point is a nice improvement as well. And Carlos can have the best bid at a, at a priming game plan, but instead rolls a double fives for the race, okay. Yeah, gets to advance to the bar point and just go all the way. He's gonna count the race after he does this real quick. Looks very natural to make the three point here to me. But maybe he's right here. He's probably out of timing if he takes two spares off the midpoint and plays them all the way to the three. Um, it just looks so awkward to have to play the last two fives after we come down to the bar. I don't really like any of them. So just going to go for the race entirely, OK? 5-2, what's this going to do for Michi? He feels the pressure to split now, OK? And with full freedom, but a lot of Full freedom makes him want to think about the cube for Carlos, but I think he still has more points to make, so he's going to take a roll first on a fan. I think he's going to be in the blender, Michi, here. Is it urgent enough to split all the way out to the bar into that stack of six checkers? That feels pretty awkward. We do pressure playing down in the outfield a little bit, but yeah, it doesn't want to end up at the bar against the three-point board. Understandable. Double three is going to solve a lot of problems. Maybe making the five pretty strong there, too. I'm not sure. This is the better priming. Okay, happy after double sixes that we made the play we did. And I think this game is over. A little too much priming threat here. And Michi, not enough time, going to really be hesitant to split against 10 in the zone, about to be 12 probably. Um, so it's hard to play anything other than a 24-point game. We don't really like to take pure 24-point games. And that's going to even out the score line at, at a five-point match, five-way, five-way. All right, 6-5 going to run. So, uh, yeah, 4-3 can split to control the outfield. Uh, two down must be still a candidate, but yeah, OK. I think after the running play, I like this. See more of the outfield. 5-3 can hit in the outfield. Nice shot. Makes a bid for freedom again. Yeah, Carlos been developing very well early in this match so far. Six down here. Michi kind of on the back foot a lot of this match. But uh, down the road, he's getting lucky where he needs to. All right, the 11 point is a nice asset. Once again, Carlos trying to roll this forward into a nice racing lead. Two's going to make a board point and probably the anchor here. I don't want to be pointing out. I think it's pretty strong to make the 20 and the four. 
But he's thinking about staying back for contact. Again, I don't think enough board advantage to do that, though, here. Interesting these. I wonder what his play B is here. This looks very natural to me. But maybe if I run this, I'll find out that there's a second strong option. But there's a lot of pressure on that 20-point blot right now, so I'd really like to prevent my opponent from, from making the five-point on my head. But he's looking at just making the pure building play. OK, OK. I guess he has a lot of ways to make an anchor with two feet down behind it anyway. We'll see here. 5-1, OK, on a roll like this, I think he's happy to have just spread out. And look at this, his play is right. OK, what do I know? I would have made a 47 error, it looks like. Nice find from Michi. Common theme that I don't execute enough, 65 on plus plus, actually, um, that we don't want to anchor up and give up this contact zone, force him to hit twice. Oh, of course, I think this happens to Michi a lot now. People hit twice on the board all the time and say, double tiger, you taught me this. <laughs> <laughs> right or wrong, they got to try it against Michi. That's it. <laughs> I think he might be right there, though. The hit on the five after that, yeah, that looks like our best ace. And then why not hit on the ace as well then to try to protect that blot on the five? Enters and covers it. Not a bad sequence for Carlos. Three is going to anchor. Maybe five just cleans up the blot to avoid giving our opponent nice sixes here. I don't think we want a fifth back so bad. Otherwise, the most mobility is 21 to 16. That's an idea that he could have played off of there, but feels a little big. 3-1 can hit loose on the front, or it can just make the 10-point looks kind of nice here, too. Uh, maybe he likes having the spare on the 8-point, allows him to make the bar point a little easier, things like this. 3-4-5, not a good roll for Michi. OK, stuck with four checkers back on the 22 again. Carlos presumably about to have the rack. Oh, he can't cover it, I don't think. Never mind about that. This probably just plays around to safety in 13 to 8 then. And if we can dodge the shot one more time, then we're looking like a pretty clear and strong advantage and probably in cube territory. Oh, he's going to go for the attack on the ace instead. This feels a little overrun to me. Not sure we really want to blitz with against an anchor and only nine in the zone. But he gets a fan out of it. And this still could be a pretty strong cube. We've really reduced our covers for that four point blot as well. But uh, yeah, this is looking scary, like a decent number of gammons. But good contact for Michi, too, so he might have to play this out. And he's going to take, yeah. He seems to be in a taking mood today. 6-2. So he can run with this, but maybe just bringing a checker in the zone for covers is stronger. Uh, oh, he can make the two-point. Yeah, this is a clever way to avoid the direct shot. And now indirects are going to leave a shot at the blot in board from Michi. So even this 3-5 that hits, he gets a little bit back on. Um, but it's going to be tough to bring the midpoint home without the 8-point. So that's uh, a bit of an asset to have given up there. Just going to park a blot and try to make an outfield point and keep his anchor. This looks like a strong play to me. 2-1. This can cover and reduce liabilities, sure. Seems nice. Got to work on that board for the inevitable contact that he's going to use to win this game. 3-1. Uh, Maybe we clean up one blot and bring down a new one? Yeah, this seems natural to me. Five three can make the 17 and play behind, I guess. But then we have way too many points and giving up something next time. So what other flexibility type plays do we have? Not sure I see it. Could have parked the blot in front of the anchor, maybe, but against the four-point board, it seems a bit scary. So he's just going to wait a roll. 4-2. I think we like to have our blot in front of the anchor again, challenge him to, to break that against our four-point board. Hopefully, we get to cover it next roll. We'll see. 5-4, something's got to go. Feels like the midpoint on first instinct. I think everything else is doing a lot of work to cover the board. I don't think we can afford to leave the 22 and volunteer sixes, but it does link up with a 17, and we still have an anchor of sorts, so it's an option. Um, but I think the six is a little too devastating against the four-point board. And at least when we break the midpoint, it forces our opponent to give up the anchor of their own. So I like the two-down idea. OK, so he's actually wrestling between that and giving up the 17. 
Um, maybe that covers more of the board to keep the midpoints. The fives can hit and cover, it feels like, though. Um, hmm. I don't have a strong reason, but I guess this uh, keeps our armies more linked, too. Maybe this does look a little more fluid. I just feel like I want the 17 more than the midpoint. I'm kind of making my decision based on that alone. But it's a good opportunity uh, when we're not sure to go through the numbers and try to figure out how each is going to play. And maybe they'll find some sequence that's going to lead him to believe that this is the best option. I'm not sure. Let's see if we can figure this one out. 5 4. Uh, 17 to 8 is best with 13 to 9, 13 8, a close candidate. Just too much distance between that 17 and 8 point, I guess. Uh, 52 behind, but these are the two best plays for sure. No real duplication with covers. I'm, again, afraid of the, afraid of the 17 to 8 for the 5 4 that it adds to cover. Or otherwise, we just have a 4-2, two, double twos. Hmm. Very tricky. I guess this allows our opponent to play off the 20 for flexibility, too. So yeah, must just be the biggest piece seems to be that it sees the most board. Double threes. This can cover, but then we don't have a last one. So maybe we just have to, so if we're not going to cover the four, do we want to make the bar point and leave that 5-1 double shot, or do we want to make the 10 points and force our opponent off the anchor? Oh, we can play three down and clean up two. This is probably better. It's just too many shots all around. We hate to bury a checker, but he found a safe play. It allows him to consolidate, find flexibility. And here must be part of the reason why giving up the 17 was a little better is now Michi's found control of a whole area of the board and a lot of flexibility out of this. Something he, I don't think he would have had had he broke the, the 13 instead. 5-2, are we just going to have to slot again? Man, what a stiff position both of them are, are stuck trying to bring home here. Aces is going to work well. Going to advance the anchor and probably just 8-6. to six. And I don't think we have cubes on a fan yet, but of course, uh, two here, huge for Carlos. Three, six fans. So still quite a bit of Michi, uh, work for Michi to uh, bring that anchor around, cover these blots, and create a real threatening position. Must still be down in the race as well. Two, one. I'm not even sure that entering like this is all that good for Carlos, but if he can find a six next roll, it'll find a lot of flexibility. Yeah, I guess it's better than being on the bar just so Michi can't flood the outfield and things like this. Has to be a little stiffer in his position. Probably just two down to the eight here. I think it's worth the six, six, and, and the eights, but okay, he's not, he doesn't want to give any fly shots, even with that blot and board. Plays safe and behind instead. Does put some pressure on the ace point blot. This can advance the anchor and only leave eights and threes to hit loose in board not all that strong, so maybe the contact with the bar point a little stronger here. Might create the most flexibility too. Really puts a squeeze on his sixes as well. Um, but just gonna keep going and keep the board anchor. Seems fine. And I'm inclined to bring the builder down here, but it is gonna create a lot more shots from the bar. We have five, two, one, six, one, two and a 5-4. Yeah, 6-4 it was. And this leaves nothing. So he's going to choose the zero shot play instead. 1-6 comes out. Michi looking to pick this plot up one more time. Keep trying to gain in the race. 5-1 can do that. And maybe on a fan we've got far enough here. But Michi still has work to do to escape that anchor. But I think he's going to have to pause and think about the recube now. Has he decided already to uh, just roll on? OK. Decides he needs a little bit more threat of escaping. 3-2, I think it is time to make a bid from the 21 while our opponent's on the bar. 
And when we get away with this, this looks like the fives could lose our market very easily, for example. So yeah, I like to play. What is this? Four three is going to fan again, and I think that means cube coming. Take a look at this. So, last roll, we had a 65 double and a 193 take. So, after he makes this improvement and gets another fan, I think we should be in pass territory pretty clearly. There's more gammon thread here, but reduced gammon value. Yeah, 219 pass. We're at 76% win, 17% gammon. Not much recube value on this 4 cube either. Uh, Michi wins about 76% games here, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. So just with that 3-2 and escaping and getting another fan, he's gotten to a passable sequence. Carlos going to let it go. Michi does lose his market. And we're going to move on to five-way, three-way. Cool, we got a lot of the usuals in the chat now. 40 people watching, cool. Welcome, everybody. The weekend crew. Are they going to take a small break here again? I might be ready for one of those, too. All right. We'll be back at three-way, five-way, fun score line. Howdy, Carlos. <laughs> back soon with the conclusion of this match. It's been a good one so far. What did I do here? Oh, there we go. I was doing that the last couple days, just transcribing as I went, and I don't know, it takes some focus away from the position. So I'm trying it this way now, I think I like it better. Well, you both focus in the speed, because the game is moving so quick, you got to yeah, keep up. Yeah, that's true. are playing pretty so quick. For sure, you need, if you're going to do this professionally, you need somebody else. <laughs> it helps, it helps. Get that off.
All right, looks like we're back in action here. At five way, three way, Michi had an ace to play there, okay. So uh, anchored up with a board advantage too. Michi looking good in this game, can't tell who's ahead in the race. <laughs> Carlos gets to make his five point, but has to leave a lot of blots around. Nice opportunity to improve to the bar. Very stacky and threatening position for Michi, but hasn't been able to develop it too much yet. 3-6 could make a bid for freedom, probably just safetying the first checker is a little stronger. But yeah, goes out there and volunteers the double shot in front of the anchor, forcing him to break the midpoint. 6-5, six, 6-6 six, six get there as well. And it works out very well for Carlos, okay. And gets to improve that into another blocking point. Five-way, three-way in a holding game, we're not going to adjust for the score too much. But provided he's ahead in the race, this looks like a pretty strong cube anyway for money as well. So uh, quick pip count is 116 for blue. And 126 for white. So 10 pips, I think, is enough, sure. And it's nice to get it in in time at this score. That is the one adjustment I would make is that, uh, I mean, Michi's probably going to take about the same, but it's going to be hard for him to find a recube. Um, Carlos will only be able to pass if his equity at one away, five away Crawford is better. This neutralizes the race, so Michi looking pretty happy to be camping on a two cube here, just need, will need to be able to escape that 21 point. But anyway, a recube, uh, Carlos needs to have less than that match equity at one away, five away Crawford, which is around 16%, much lower than for money. So Michi not able to gain a lot of value in claiming games with the cube at this score. And now that the race is close, I think Carlos wants to sit on his structure in front of that anchor for some time. 5-4 will get to close the board, though. I don't think he's ready to run and potentially risk losing gamins. Well, he has his closed board. Maybe the next five will go instead of breaking his board. No improvements to the board and potentially a blot behind for Carlos. Wants to avoid that possibility potentially here. Looks at just clearing. This opens up double fours though. Um, so I don't think we want to give Michi jokers like that. We can just hold it. You know, we're not really losing anything by playing like this instead. But I do expect fives to run here. Five, six is forced. Okay, no choice there. And if he can get away with this, this is a pretty close looking game. And 5-4 can't attack. Well, it can hit loose, but against a, a, a six-point board, I think it's a bit too much. Can lose a gammon here. So he's going to just have to find some natural clearing play. Okay. Uh, really needs Michi to not roll a six or a five and escape the freedom, and hopefully gets to continue with it and attack next roll. 3-1 uh, gets the checker in. So no gammons for Michi. That's a nice improvement. And 4-3. Going to leave a lot of shots from the bar, but definitely worth going for here. The race is too close to just let this fly. So we have two, five, two, six, one, six, about a sixth of the time. Two, four, not so bad, puts pressure on, on Carlos at least. But everything but a deuce is gonna point on head. Uh, oh, maybe some doubles as well. Five, five is awkward, what can we do with this? I think we're basically forced to hit loose. And then maybe our best is actually to, oh, we can come in and take two checkers off, sure, sure. Switching to the ace is probably no sort of play. And a hit will win the game for Michi. 1-4, no such luck. Gets in there and at least gets to hit maybe on, on certain rolls that don't clean up. Maybe he gets the same number of hits from the roof, I'm not sure. 2-1, interesting. Can point on head and uh, keep Michi from running. But it also keeps the contact for a little longer. So I'm not sure which is better there for the win. Not a lot of gammons here. Two in and why not? I think I'm inclined to clean up the ace in case I get a shot and just try to depend on my five point board. But he leaves the blot in place to maybe remake it and close out later instead. Six two, okay, distribution a little bit awkward for Carlos and as long as, he also saves a five that he doesn't have to run with, Michi does there. So that's probably part of his decision. But I think Michi wants to stay one more roll, gets two here. And next roll will likely be time to go since he'll be destroying his board so much to stay. 6-5, doesn't leave a shot. Okay, looks like we're likely to get to an even three-way, three-way scoreline, three-point match. 5-1, forced to run.
What a tight match we've gotten to watch here. Maybe five to three in three off is a little better to make sure we don't miss on a deuce, but I guess the miss deuce misses can't hurt too much. They still leave him on the same number of rolls, and Michi decides he doesn't have enough. Can't get off in three rolls, so he can resign the match. Or in two rolls, since uh, Carlos is always off in three. All right, three-point match. A little bit of change because of the proximity to end here. The take point a little higher at like 25%. So we'll get racing cubes in a little earlier. Uh, gammon value a little different though, so earlier in the game doesn't change too much. But just going to help us adjust like the most borderline of decisions on the double side or the take pass side. Four is a great improvement for Michi. I think he comes out with an advantage in the opening here. First, I remember having an anchor, I think we really need to split here. Maybe two up is even fine, but decides to play one behind the anchor instead, okay. Sixes gets to just break away to freedom. And very stacky, but still must be getting close to a cube here. Four, two can't anchor. So down with the four and cover with the two, okay. And against the three-point board, I think Michi needs to make some sort of improvement to uh, to have a, a real potent cube here, but maybe at three-way, three-way, you can adjust to, to sending a little bit earlier. But there's just a lot of shot levers, too. Shot levers not too punishing, given the gappy structure that Carlos has with the made four and the deuce, five and three open. So, tricky one, but I don't know. I'd be inclined to, to wait a roll and see if I can find some with a little more teeth. can enter this while he thinks too, potentially. Looks like he's gonna take a roll. 3-1, a huge improvement. Okay, and this is probably gonna bring the cube. Unless our opponent anchors. That might be the only thing that saves. What did he roll? 6-3 made the anchor, and now it's gonna be an easy take, but we have a massive racing lead. So I think it's still probably worth sending the cube here. Yeah, missed the small cube last time. 3-1 was going to decide the game quite a bit, but only a 14-pip race now. So he's going to send it. And the bar point contact, of course, enough to take. Even a slightly elevated take point, I'm pretty sure. 3 one's going to come down and try to break contact. Yeah, still 140 take. Everything correct so far. 5-1, going to play down to the bar. Relatively simple game here. Michi just going to try to clear safe, safely. Carlos trying to get his board ready in case he, in case Michi has to leave a shot, trying to clear that 13 point. Probably continue to the six for distribution. Yeah, I like that. Not sure the bar point is really a key piece of structure, but the five and the three really are now that the deuce is made. We're happy to break the eight to build there too. Five, four, okay. Michi finds his little extra vig of breaking contact, but a big set enough to get him back in. I'm not sure that he should instantly just leave the bar point. Maybe keeping a little bit of contact is worth it. So I think he's still down some in the race. Um, take point again, 25% on the recube as well. Um, so I think Carlos has work to do, but one more set could do it. 6-3, going to be a good step in the right direction. He really wants a spare on that th uh, 5 for, for bear off distribution later. It's a good play there. Uh, 3 coming in here, I think. And then maybe we can spend our last one for distribution to the 4. I like that by Michi. Ace is going to bring 2 in. We can take a crossover and another on the 5. I like it. This is a tight race to potentially decide the match. 5-3, I think this 5 is cocked. Leans against the wall as far as I can tell. So as long as it's, if it's flat on the checker, then it's a legal roll. If it's supported by the wall at all, then it's not flat on the surface, which makes it a cocked die. But yeah, whenever these come up, these things the players tend to ask someone to come over and make a ruling. Always better to get like a third party opinion in case it matters, but 
yeah. If you miss, move the checker and it tips, that's usually a good indicator that it's not flat on the surface. So. Uh, double five is a little bit better. I'm not sure we need to put all three on the three here. He's playing really quickly here, too. Like, he feels Michi's time pressure or something like this, but he's got plenty of time in the, in the bank. And I think this is probably going to get to a recube. I mean, we'll have to count the race exactly. What is this? 57, 69, 72 for Michi to 58, 68, 71 for Blue. So maybe not ahead enough if it's just one pip in the race. Sorry? What's the score? Uh, the, the pip count? I think it's 71 to 72 if I counted it right. So we're getting really close, but not quite enough to send the cube. Uh, this should be an 11 pip lead if I counted right now, and we'll see what Michi does. Back down to one, okay. And of course, Michi with a little bit of an advantage with more checkers off already. 11's gonna threaten to have a cube coming again. Michi rolls uh, light, there's probably gonna be a double take. And six pips I think is gonna be enough to send it, if we've got that pip count right. 57 to 48, 51, yeah. So is 46, what are, this should be a six pip point of last take for money with a little bit of wastage as well. I think he really needs, I think this is a big send in the, the take pass is in question here with the higher take point, the 25. Oh, he bumped the checker, okay, got it back to the right way. Yeah, I think we missed the cube there, I really do. But maybe happy he didn't send it after rolling so low with just four. I'm not sure what Michi's decision would have been there. It would have been a close one, but possible that he could have passed. Uh, gains three pips. I think we probably still have a cube here. But if he didn't send last time and things got worse, I'd be surprised if Carlos finds a cube now. Well, he keeps hitting the checkers when he rolls the dice. It's funny. Okay, this is going to catch up quite a bit. We probably know cube anymore. 6-3 staying alive, though. And Carlos, yep, on the lead roll now. 35 to 34. So this is getting back into cube territory this close to the end. Just being on lead roll is worth quite a bit. 6-5, going to recover quite a bit. Now I think Michi back to being a favorite. 5-3, not a no misses though. Good shot for Carlos, staying alive. <laughs> and 5-1. Now we have that gap on the five, a big risk for, no, for next roll. So 21 pips to 17 pips, but a little more wasted for Michi. I don't think that's enough to account for it, so I think he's right to roll it. And sure, six to three, not 100% certain about the best three there, but makes all the big numbers work. Six two, gonna avoid the five at least. And this is, yeah, it looks like it should be basically a two-roll, two-roll, and I think Carlos likely lost his market. Um, Michi, what sets are going to work? Going to need threes or better if he performs well here. The misses aren't so bad. Even the two-one, two-one is his worst. Three-one, what else do we have? Double ones. So how bad is three-two? Three-two leaves him the small favorite. I guess there's a lot of misses on the next roll in the future here, too. It's a tricky one, but these are... Those are tough to know without just memorizing them. I might have talked myself into thinking I have a close take there. Yeah, that actually, I think that was a take. Yeah, it looks like a 154 take. Hundred fifty-four millipoints. So actually two twenty at this score, yeah. So pretty clear take. He's only sixty-nine and a half percent to win. A lot of misses. That was a huge...
um, maybe also expecting his opponent having to have trouble playing that game through. But you would think that the consistent thing would be to let that go and try to play more games instead of risking so much on one game. So I expect Michi to be the kind of person that's just playing what he thinks is right. And I think Carlos seems like a pretty strong player too. So I don't see a big reason to adjust too much there. But okay, 4-2 opens with a pointing in the, in the Crawford game here. And 3-3, three, three, wow, a lot of good options here. I think the, the default should just be to make the four-point board, the best four-point board possible. But of course, advancing to an anchor is kind of nice. The anchor, less value here. Okay, unstacking is nice too. This is our standard opening play. Can't be too bad, but I think he misses an opportunity to make the five and the three. Um, at this Crawford score, the gammon doesn't really uh, matter too much for Michi either, which means Carlos doesn't have to play too conservatively to prevent a gammon. Uh, maybe because we can point on had making the bars a little stronger there, sure, sure. Making the five always feels like an option though, leaves a few too many shots. Michi fans on a two point board and Carlos, a very strong favorite in this match at this point then. I think this is going to cover the eight twice for lack of other options. We could also use the five to get going from the back and just try to capitalize on a race. Oh, but he's going to go for this six to four distribution again. Now, this is more right, right more often than I usually find, but I really don't like that builder there. It's less functional than it seems. Double aces might have used it to make five points, something like this. Okay, having an anchor is going to generate some wins for Michi, so a little bit of a lifeline here. But definitely behind it right now. Five looks like it's going to hit. And the two can clean up, so why not? Try to consolidate this racing lead and escape. Double twos gets to point on head and hit again. Okay, so this is big comeback for Michi, putting two in the air. But still a lot of work to do to get those three checkers freed behind all the structure that Carlos has created already. One six enters one. Michi looking to probably improve his board first. And three one's going to do that. If he can make a five prime quickly, he's going to have a huge advantage in this game. Ace four enters, but the four is not so good. I think this is stuck stacking up the four again. Now that he's outboarded, um, I don't think he wants to volunteer from the 13 for purity. I'm not sure if that gains him enough. I'm not sure if it hurts enough to play eight to four, but really Carlos in a big rush to play from those back checkers as soon as possible. Looking for a six, provided Michi can't make the five prime, but he does. So twos and aces to advance, and still gonna be a lot of work here. So two up, three behind. I love this play. Yeah, we just got to solve the priming issue. But Michi looking very strong in this position. One six buys a bunch of mobility too. This is a great shot for him. Carlos really needs a two to get up to the edge or a six out quickly. Double fives is the opposite. He's going to give up the midpoint and make the three point. Um, still keeping his prime for a roll at least, but gives Michi all the flexibility to build the back of the prime now too. 5-1, my instinct is to kind of spread out in the outfield, but it's going to leave a lot of six fly shots. With the blotting board, that seems okay. Yeah, this is probably the best containment option. Leaves less, least fly shots, but waste the checker that could have been used towards building the nine. 5-4, uh, must just have to clear safely. I guess if, they, if it wins more somehow to cover the ace, he can go for that since he doesn't fear gammons in this position really, but I don't think it really does that. I think this is the most graceful use of the checkers. Michi gonna hit off the edge and cover. Uh, maybe he doesn't have to give up his five prime. Now Carlos has really good rolls from the bar in one six, uh, two five, and two six. Five two can't cover either. So I think he's gonna distribute the checkers in a way to try to make the six prime. Sure, one less blot, this seems okay. Uh, leaves the sixes duplicated that he wanted to escape with though. 4-6 can't enter. Michi's still trying to make the 6 prime. The, I think the only thing we have is just to play down. 2-3 gets to cover the ace at least, but uh, Carlos relying on his gapped 4 prime to do a lot of work in this position. Double 3 is going to solve all of Michi's problems. I, I don't think he needs to hit off the edge. I think he can just go for mobility purely, but a little bit of both must be fine as well. 
Just doesn't want to let his opponent anchor at the edge, I guess. Gets to make the 24. Um, <laughs> considers hitting his checker, thinks better of it. Six one gets to cover the front. Not bad. Now some funny cracking numbers like double twos, but not anymore. Everything looking pretty simple for Michi. Um, should have some trap plays available too. Uh, not anymore. This is going to be forced pretty much. I guess he can play to the two, but it's a little too deep. Six five waiting for Carlos to crash. Five four. I think both going to come from the eight just to. Uh, use best spare distribution, but maybe he'll think about seven to deuce not to, like the point he wants to clear as an extra checker and no spares on the six and five, so there must be some ugly numbers from here. Shot levers, five two is not one of them if he doesn't want it to be, but like a five three, for example, is gonna have to volunteer. Five four, only broken down to a four point board, so Carlos should be able to keep that four point board for contact later. And Michi forced to volunteer the shot. The six can turn this around for sure. So some winning chances for Carlos. And he hits it with a 6-1. Still work to do. Michi must still be a favorite here. Entering with 5-4 uh, can't hit, but 5-3-2-1. All those are going to hit loose, I think, and take our opponent off the edge of the prime. So now eights hit, sixes escape. Ooh, that's a fun eight to hit with. Nice shot. Michi a favorite to come in again, but dances. Six here for Carlos is huge, about a third of the time. Four one cleans up the blot though. Pretty nice improvement. And still not at much risk of cracking. Six, I think Michi really needs to hit here. Yeah, I think being hit with the ace is not a disaster, but our opponent escaping of the sixes, it's very scary. Still hard to cover later even when missed though. And he misses, aces and deuces cover and make it an easy ride home for Michi. 5-5, five, five. how does this work? This is ugly. Can come around and switch, I think this is probably our best. Everything else is volunteering. A shot, no six in. Double twos comes in with two at least and can take a checker off, could have thought about taking two, but I think he's in a clear enough lead here. Doesn't want to volunteer shots and potentially lose the game against the four point board. Gammon's not worth anything, so Michi cruising to that nine away, or two away, one away post Crawford game. Oh, not so fast, maybe. Carlos makes a lot of progress with that double sixes there. If we do get to a win for Michi though, he'll, have, he'll be at the free drop score line where he needs to send a cube immediately in the game. And if, if he has any advantage, Carlos can just let one game go and play for 50% in the next game. So, still a roll behind. Next set puts Carlos in the, in the lead though, and a miss from Michi will put, it, put Carlos in the lead as well. Five, one, nice. So he keeps his uh, two and four. Missing those could, uh, could leave a, a, le a miss for sure. 6-5, just two off, okay. Miji's still under some pressure to avoid that four and deuce here. 6-1, gonna work okay. What's he worried about? He might have touched the dice while they were rolling, I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe I should look at that on the camera, I'm not sure. He's just playing quickly. That's interesting, I'll have to see this on the board here. Maybe they can look at the stream around a little bit of delay. I'm not sure what the ruling is either. I think Ben's over there to help out with it, so I might need to double check on that. But they can check out on stream what exactly happened. If he interfered with the dice, then we should re-roll for sure. And the 6-1 is like not a particularly bad roll, but it's not at least a set that would decide the game either. So I'm not sure what he should want to do here. Always best to just let the director make a ruling, though. Hopefully Ben's in there looking at the camera, 
trying to see around if he's in the room here. We'll figure out what exactly happened and what the ruling should be. I think it's a pretty simple ruling. It's just can we see on video exactly what happened or not. And if we can see it on video, then we, then we can make a really easy ruling. I'm not sure I could tell. It was awful close. But this is a kind of chouette play kind of thing. In more casual backgammon, you know, this kind of stuff, I, I feel like it's more natural. People are just trying to play fast and get rolls off. And so grabbing for the dice before you've actually played your role and the bear off is, is fairly common. So I, I don't think he's like trying to do anything specific here, you know? Um, yeah, they're talking about that in the tournament just to avoid it happening again, you know? But, uh, yeah. But yeah, so I don't think like Carlos is trying to do anything with that. I think it's just probably the style of backgammon he's used to playing. I thought it was too. But he's checking the recording to confirm. Yeah. It was quick though. I couldn't tell if the dice had stopped yet either, and we should be able to tell on the camera pretty easily if it's clear. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it feels really bad. Yeah. I don't think he meant anything about it. I think he's just trying to play quickly. Yeah. We're coming up to it on the stream here. So waiting on a director ruling real quick here. Here come the 5-5. Five five. And they ruled that it was a legal rule. Okay. Double ones, wow. Michi going to need threes or better to get through this one. And double ace is not enough. Carlos is going to be your winner in this round. Nice match from them. Fun finish there, too. Well, I want to see on the stream now. I'm just catching up with it if I watch here. I guess they already watched it and made a ruling on it, you know, but, but I kind of want to see what it looks like from over here. Yeah, they stop first. Yeah, yeah, they do clearly. Okay, so nice ruling. It's always good to have the video for that. But I totally understand Michi's concern there, you know. Um, but unfortunately, gets out rolled in the end. Carlos is going to advance. We'll be back with another round of the main shortly, I think. I don't think we're getting up on lecture time. I think we play pretty much straight through. Uh, so, yeah, more backgammon to come. I'll be back soon. What's up, Rick? I think I did comment on some of the, yeah. What he tells you to do when he's taking that? Yeah. yeah. You too, right? Yeah, he made one of those in this one too. I don't know. I just comment on whatever I did. I mean, it yeah. looks like a, I mean, I know the guy's a wizard, but I'm yeah. not Why? Did you get uh, the match file you're just looking no, at? No, I'm just, uh, but I remember. Said, yeah. How the fuck did he take that? He yeah. rolled like double twos, got a miracle roll, and I'm like, yeah, I think somewhere. I can't remember. I'd have to look at the file again. But yeah, it was all over the place. The only thing I saw from you was like, uh, just like, I think you busted up the board a couple of times before you did the shots. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
myself eventually as well. I'll ask Ben about it too, though. But they should be able to get the name. Oh, Phil, hey, anytime you need me. 
I think we're probably still after lunch break. Okay, cool.